uh, go ahead and call the Town of Thompson Station Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for the month of October to order. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. If all would rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, does everybody have their microphones on? Yes, sir. All right, board, you have before you our consent agenda, which consists of the consideration of our minutes from the September 14th, 2021 meeting. I'll uh, make a motion to approve consent agenda. I have a motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Motion second for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're up to announcements. An agenda request. Mr. Mayor, if I could. Um, topic three, I think we would like to remove that from the agenda this evening. Uh, we were not able to hold any meetings in uh, Canterbury to have this discussion, so I don't feel it necessary to have that topic tonight. Okay. So we want to take a motion or uh, take an action on that? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to remove topic three, Kreitz Lane Traffic Plan, Boma Action regarding detours. Okay. I have a, I have a second. I do want to make a comment about it, though, uh, just for everyone who may be watching. We had committed to having a town, um, a town hall style meeting to discuss options for this detour, but the council told us that we needed to do it as a public meeting and be noticed. So we've been trying to coordinate schedules, uh, like on a Saturday or, or whatever. So that's the reason for the delay. For anybody who's curious, I've gotten a few emails about it. But I'll second the motion. All right. So we have a motion, second. For the comments. No, sir. All right, so my understanding is you know, we're taking it off the agenda to vote for it, but we're endeavoring to have a public input meeting or town hall. Type we move this to the November moment. And then bring it up and do that between now and the November meeting, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And so moved. We'll take item number three off the agenda. Mr. Mayor, one other thing. I'd like to add one topic if I could. Okay. Um, one of the things I just finished, uh, MTAS level two training, and one of the topics that came up was uh, one of the services that MTAS provides, which is an evaluation process that helps the board and relay information to you, Ken. I think it would be a good exercise for all of us to go through. Uh, they're going through that right now in Nolensville. And just with the sunshine laws and the way we really can't meet and everything, I think it's a good tool and practice for us to go through. So I'd like to have that, have that as a topic for us to discuss. Okay, so the topic would be? Evaluate, the BOMA evaluation with the town administrator. Okay, town administrator evaluation yep. process or? Correct. Plus staff or all the, okay. Correct. So right. I'd like to add that to the agenda. Okay. So uh, Alderman Stover's making a motion. Where would you like to place that on your agenda? Uh, it would have been five. number, I guess, six, but now it'll be five. And following yeah. item six would be the redistricting. Uh, All right, that's come out of, yeah, item six. Okay. Seven. Seven. Yep. Mr. Mayor, it looks like item five would be the evaluation. Excuse me. Item six would be the evaluation. Item seven would be the redistricting committee. Okay. All right. This takes a board action. Yes, just, right. just to approve the agenda. Then. Yep. Second. Okay. A motion, second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll bring that up later in the meeting. All right. Any other announcements or agenda requests? All right. We'll go ahead and move into public comment. Uh, public comment, uh, anyone uh, is uh, from the public is welcome to speak. Please come to the lectern, state your name and your address, and we will give you three minutes um, uh, in the interest of everybody's time. So I have two people that signed in. Looks like Janie Sadler. Is it a 
Jane? Jane Sadler. Jane Sadler. Good evening. Uh, as, as I said, my name is Jane Sadler. I live at 4650 Gander Bridge Road. While I'm not considered a Thompson Station voting resident, I do come to these meetings because the, the things that you do in these meetings do affect me. And the one thing I, I said at the, the planning meeting a couple of weeks ago is when you are making your decisions, I really want you all to start looking more and more at infrastructure and traffic. We've just gone through the whole debacle of the quarry. We've had to live through either not going somewhere or adjusting our plans because the traffic has been absolutely horrendous through there when they have the concert. They're getting ready to shut down Pride Lane, which will cause people to, to either come down off the table, which is where I'm off of, or they'll be coming straight through. And then for me to turn off of Harpeth Table, will be an absolute nightmare. So when you're doing things that affect traffic, I want you to stop and look at all of the people, not just your constituents. We're getting ready to bring in Pleasant Creek subdivision. I'm not sure where that stands in the development phase. That's approved for 400 houses. That's a large amount of traffic that's gonna be dumped onto Lewisburg Pike Harpeth Payton who knows where else it's going to impact, trying to get off of 65, 840 to Lewisburg Pike at 5 o'clock in the evening. Some days is, is great, you sell right on down, and some days you sit and think, am I ever going to get off the road? I also want you to be thinking, because the I-65 Buckner interchange is not scheduled for another six to eight months to start construction, according to the TDOT website. They're already moving dirt for those houses. Those houses will be coming along shortly. And that's going to be more traffic. So everything you do, think of it in a, in, a, um, in, a, in, a, in a flow pattern as to how it's going to affect people. And traffic has got to be a major concern. If someone were to have an incident on, on Harper Pike Bull or on Lewisburg Pike in the areas now that we're getting ready to be impacted by, it's, it's next to impossible to get traffic, to get emergency personnel. We have a fire department at the end of Harper Payton at Harper Payton and Trinity Payton But it's still going to take those gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, quite a bit of time to get down to us. So you've got to think about how narrow these roads are. These roads cannot accommodate much more traffic. So we've got to start looking at the traffic around this area. We've got to do a better job of planning for all of that. Thank you. Neil Otavia. My name is Neil Otavia. My wife Susan and I have been residents of Pecan Hill for 18 years. We lived in, uh, we love our house a lot. Uh, we like our neighbors an awful lot and our entire community has been wonderful. But within the last couple of weeks, my mayor, Corey Napier, informed me personally of a permit he secured to add a driveway attaching his, his property to our subdivision at the end of our cul-de-sac on Sherry Street. I checked with the Thompson Station planning manager, Mr. Michael Woods, who asked if he did confirm that as being true. This permit will now allow anyone to enter and or exit our subdivision through the Napier property if so wished. Mr. Napier's initial reason for this additional driveway, as he stated to me personally, was his fear of entrapment of his family. He stated his family did have this kind of experience recently after a storm. They were trapped for three days, according to Mr. Napier, <coughs> because of fallen trees and debris. Mr. Napier's, form, Mr. Napier's farm consists of 11.97 acres where he plans to build a house for his elderly parents, which I also did myself, and homes for each of his three children in the near future, according to a phone conversation one of our residents had with his wife. This information should be very concerning to every resident in the subdivision. And in addition to that, an unsightly gate he has already installed does not at all comply with the character or aesthetics of our upscale neighborhood. 
driveway may decrease our values of property. We do not want or we need the construction traffic likely to occur when additional construction is done on this property. Our quiet, walkable, safe streets will disappear. We are not vigilant. The enjoyment of walking our pets, teaching our children how to ride a bicycle, roller skate, etc., would no longer be a possibility. The sole purpose of this neighborhood change is all because of one man's want of personal gain. I recap with Mr. Napier's property is a farm. It's not a property like we have with all the other 60 plus homes. The unsightly gate already installed does not fit at all the characteristic or aesthetics of our neighborhood. He also installed warning signs and they should never be posted on our properties. Those signs say no parking, personal, private, private property, etc. These immediately need to be removed. They do not add to any kind of security for our families, period. Having this driveway may decrease our property value as we know. We do not want or need additional construction traffic moving through our quiet, peaceful streets. The dirt, the mud, and the noise, and the confusion, and the danger of that is not what we want for our parents and our children. We all purchased our homes Thank to be you. part of a neighborhood where we could raise our families without fear of someone trying to change it just to benefit themselves. With that, I hear you. Thank you, Neil. All right. Those are the only sign-ins. Uh, public comment still opens. Anyone else wishing to speak, please, please come forward. Please, please come forward and stay. My name is Karen Dahl. We live at 2607 Sherry Lake. And uh, Neil just brought this to our attention today about uh, what you're planning on doing. So um, what I want to ask you is, Where's your plat, your revised plat on this addition that you're going to do? Um, did you get a survey? I don't see any survey stakes out there. So you could be encroaching on two of the neighbors' lots as well. And um, have you sent this to your planning commission? Have you notified any of the homeowners in there? I never got notification of what you were going to do and be part of our subdivision. Because back when we moved in 93 and we were developing those new homes, you were totally against the kind hills. You know, you put a sign up there that said pick farms. You know, pick, you said pick farms. So now you want to be a part of that community with this. Well, I'd like to know why you didn't notify us. And you're a mayor of Thompson Station, you have a personal interest. Um, so, and, and what you're doing is to benefit you and your family. And I don't think it's ethical, and it's not good business practice. That's my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Stoll. Public comments still open. My name is Joshua Sadler. I also live off of uh, Harper Fabens Mill Road. I uh, already brought this up with uh, Vice Mayor Bell, uh, Bell but uh, my issue is with uh, topic number one. The 6.19 acres that it's referring to, if I understand it correctly from the development maps, actually sit either in or alongside a floodplain along the, I think it's the West Harbor River there. But anyway, I just wanted to bring it to the attention of this board that any development there is going to impact the flow of the river through that area. And one, you can't bring sewer across an open body of water like the river there. So you can't bring it from the Thompson Station side into that area. You'd have to end up putting in a septic tank. That area is prone to flooding twice in the last decade, once in 2010 and once earlier this year, that river almost reached Lewisburg Pike. So any alterations to the area there in the flow of the river could potentially impact Lewisburg Pike itself which of course would then impact the county. Uh, and if a septic tank is put into that area, which would almost certainly have to be the case, the business itself doesn't need to flood. The business could be raised above the water line, but if the septic tank still falls below it, 
that would eventually result in the contents of that flowing out into the business park and anything else in that area. So I wanted to bring that to your attention before you consider rezoning it. Uh, I recommend reaching back out to the landowner and raising these concerns. I don't think any development needs to go into that area until that's considered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Crime against limit 2611 Sherry Lane. I support Mr. Neal and the rest of the residents shared by Peacock Hill. I think it's personal gain on your behalf. You have a big yard that can go to any belt. So the excuse of trees falling, we had plenty of trees fall in our neighborhood too, and we all banded together to move those trees apart so we can get out of our side. Here to build a driveway for these houses that he wants to build with his personal and his private supporters. Thank you. Just a comment, Gary King, 3684 Monsdale. This is, is this on? Okay, it is at this damn post. Um, all that dirt they're moving on RC's place, that's not for housing, that's for the extension of Buckner Lane where it's gonna dump into Thompson Station Road. And that's supposed to be finished like in nine months because they're putting the base coat of, of the, you know, for the concrete, they're putting it down right now. So that's all that dirt moving they're doing over there. And then next phase is to go uh, towards 65, you know, for Buckner Road. It's gonna be the name, forgot the name. But all that dirt, it's not for housing. It's, it's just for the new road. Somebody had mentioned something, I think that's, I think they were talking about our CISO place. So, anyway. yeah. Uh, I, my neighbors that live at Con Hills and I get to listen to the drilling and the beeping incessantly six days a week. So, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. Please come forward. I want to break the equipment. I'm Betsy Hester, and I represent a portion of Thompson Station on the Williamson County Commission, those individuals who live in District 2. I do not personally live in Thompson Station. I live at 112 Valley Ridge Road in Franklin, Tennessee. When the city of Franklin was going to develop Berry Farms, which of course is a very large area, residential commercial. For almost a year, I was included in discussions, in opportunities to speak for that period of time. I knew the direction of Berry Farms. When the Star Whatever Amphitheater, I don't know what the name of it is, we call it the quarry. When it was annexed, there was no communication for an elected official who represents part of Thompson Station. I also represent individuals on Harper Paytonsville Road. I agree with the Saddlers. That was terrible planning, no communication. When the city of Franklin developed Berry Farms, they talked to us for about a year. There were many, many meetings. I have heard problems with the sound. There is no noise, noise ordinance. Why wasn't the quarry required to put up sound definition, defining materials. I understand that can be done. The beat of the Jonas Brothers was heard for miles away. Miles away. The traffic on Harford Paytonsville Road, the traffic on Lewisburg Pike, not accepted. Why didn't the developer of that quarry require buses from Cool Springs, from the Ag Park? That could have been done. 
Instead, you've got traffic back on 65. Did the Planning Commission go before the Williamson County Highway Department and ask for permission and communication about using Harpeth Paytonsville Road? That did not happen to my knowledge. And I ask, please communicate more. Thank you. Yes, I'm Paul Polly, 2652 Sherry Lane. Also live in the cul de sac um, where Mr. Napier's talking about putting the driveway. 100% um, disagree with it. Not part of our neighborhood. Should not be putting a driveway in our neighborhood. There's no purpose behind it. Um, again, he's not meeting with any of the aesthetics of our neighborhood, what we bought in the neighborhood for, and uh, it's an investment for every one of us. And every person in the neighborhood we've talked to is against it. Um, the talking to Williamson County and Franklin, no, that's not Thompson Station, but I would think we'd want to be at least at the level they are, or better, both of them said they would never even consider allowing this to happen. Never. So I feel very strongly the only reason it has been approved for a permit is because Mr. Napier is the mayor, 100%. And in addition to the fact his drawing for this permit shows a driver in one place, he now has it in another place, which is not at all very strong. On another note, nothing to do with this bone was a trademark. It's a public road. It's a public road. Um, my name is Adam Hollis. I live at uh, 2623 Sherry Lane. Um, and uh, my wife and I wake up every morning. We walk the dogs in that cul-de-sac. It's always very peaceful. A lot of times, Mr. Napier, we see your horses kind of through the, uh, through the trees, always very pleasant. Um, it was my understanding that this was created and voted on uh, so you would have some sort of emergency exit access. Um, so I'm puzzled by the, the signs that are up there now. Uh, no parking violators will be towed. Um, I'm just really confused and I think it would be helpful for everybody to hear you comment uh, and kind of explain to us exactly what the intent of the gate is that leads into our subdivision. I think it would be helpful if we all knew because we're just trying to get dribs and drabs and trying to get information. For most of the residents, it's really the first time we've heard about it. Um, I'm sure everything you did was legal and on the up and up and the paperwork was filed and it was voted on. I'm not questioning that. But as somebody who has campaigned and run for office, you know exactly what it's like and how it's necessary to go out and talk to the people. And you put in this structure in our neighborhood and signage now, and you didn't talk to anybody. David Amond, I live at 2615 Sherry Lane. Known you for a long time. Um, helped you uh, back in the days they were talking about the open sewer system over there at the Adams property over there behind us. And, you know, really worked with you. And I, I don't envy your job. Uh, I, I know you were resisting it when you, when you uh, started down this road, but you're sucked into it now. Um, and, you know, it, it's your land. And, you, you do whatever you need to. You can do anything you want to with it, as, as far as I'm concerned. But I guess where, where I see a line being drawn is if it affects the property values of, of your neighbors and of the neighborhood that's you know kind of stood with you uh, all these years. Um, I just kind of see it as a kind of overstepping a little bit. If you want to annex that property 
into the Pecan Hill subdivision, let's do that. Let's annex it and have it as a vote. Uh, have people come together, have the residents vote on it, annex the property, then go through the channels and you know essentially make you a resident of uh, the Pecan Hill subdivision. But um, I guess what what you do with your land um, does affect our our property values, and so uh, I felt important to at least stand with my neighbor uh, and and hope you kind of reconsider, at least kind of let's, let's get it on the table and openly discuss it. I'd, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it and uh, what your plans are. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sellers. I was waiting to be last because I had something totally different I want to talk about. But uh, I, uh, I'm Larry Simmons, 3116 Hazleton. And I'm the uh, chairman of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board here for Thompson Station. And uh, I've been on the Parks Board now for about five years, and it's, it's been wonderful. I've done it. I, uh, I, I love our parks. I love our trails. I spent a lot of time on them. But uh, several things since I've been chairman, several things have come to mind that I think this board needs to consider. I've talked to Alderman Bell about it. Unfortunately, he's not here tonight. But right now, it's an advisory board. And being an advisory board, according to... Uh, to Mr. Wood, who we work very closely with, done a great job supporting us, but we have really no say in what goes on as far as decisions on the parks. Uh, tonight, you have in front of you a, 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 a uh, uh, I guess, an amendment or whatever for thirty-three thousand dollars for doing uh, the second phase of, of uh, archaeological studies in the park. And I've looked at that, and it really concerns me because. There are so many things we've done in the park, and I've got the Kimmy Horn contracts, I've got the project plans. Uh, everything seems to have no end on it. If you look at what you're asked to sign tonight, there's no, there's no start date, there's no end date. And it seems to me, uh, while, while Mr. Wood does an incredible job, an incredible job supporting us, he's human. And he, he can't give the oversight to some of this that I think the town needs. Because I think the town has spent a lot of money so far, you know, you got $33,000 tonight. So far, there's $147,000 committed on the trail project, and that's just for phase two. And phase two is still two years away from being finished. When, frankly, my belief is, looking at the project plan, there's possibilities to maybe do some overlay, do some, do some, bring some things together, and maybe do two things at the same time to get it finished. There's no land acquisition, which was originally in the plan. In fact, it's still in there. No land, no, no, no land acquisition, it's all park property. So again, I just ask tonight, number one, I would ask that you defer signing this and let the parks board review it, or if we're not able to review it, you look at it, make sure it has an end date on it, or you're gonna to continue to have these things just continue to drag out. And number two, ask the town look at maybe changing the status of the parks board to where it becomes a, uh, not an advisory board, but has the authority to basically be the first point of review, as similar to the Planning Commission. They review, they make their recommendations, and then obviously the BOMA has the last say on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. All right. Parks Board. Anyone else? Yeah. All right, we'll close public comments. We'll go into unfinished business, item number one. This is a public hearing and second reading of Ordinance 2020-009, Ordinance of the Town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, to amend the town's zoning map by rezoning 6.19 acres of territory located west of Lewisburg Pike near the Harper Paytonsville Road intersection, being part of tax map and parcel 144-80 from D1 to commercial up uh, to community commercial. Is this you, Michael? I think, do you want to do the public hearing? Well, yeah, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing on this. We've already heard from one gentleman regarding concerns about ARAP permits and setbacks and so forth. But uh, anyone wishing to speak specifically on this topic, please come forward. Being no one, we'll close the public hearing and it's back to the board. Michael. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so this is the second reading of public hearing for uh, the rezoning request of just over six acres from D1 to Community Commercial. Uh, this is located on the western side of Lewisburg Pike at the intersection of Harper and Paintonsville Road. In staff's analysis, this request is in conformance with the general plan. 
Uh, additionally, this will be an extension of an existing commercial zoning district. Um, you'll remember from uh, the discussion last month, this was uh, deferred, uh, it was recommended by the Planning Commission uh, in January of 2020, but there were concerns about wastewater disposal. Uh, when this request got to BOMA in uh, June of 2020, uh, it was deferred due to unresolved questions about wastewater disposal on site. Since that time, the applicant has proposed a self-imposed condition on the rezoning request, uh, and that condition is that the property should not be developed, including submission of any building permits, until either septic has been approved by Williamson County or sewer is otherwise available to the property. Staff recommends that the rezoning uh, be approved with the applicant's self-imposed condition attached to the rezoning. Uh, I know that there was a question about floodplains and things like that. All of that would be reviewed. That's not a, necessarily a rezoning consideration. Uh, when a site plan or a final plat or any additional development comes in, they'll of, co of course have to abide by the town's FEMA-approved uh, floodplain requirements. Okay. All right. Thank you, Micah. All right. <laughs> Board. Michael, real quick, can you go over what the self-imposed conditions are again? Uh, yes, sir. Almost over. So this is um, related to the, to the wastewater. So the applicant has said that the property shall not be developed including submission of any building permits until either septic has been approved by Williamson County or sewer is otherwise available to the property. So they basically put a hard stop on any development until there is some kind of wastewater disposal available to the development. So from a process standpoint, up zoning something before these infrastructure things are solved. Or, I mean, chicken and egg. I yeah. Yes. If it was within the town's wastewater regional system uh -huh. coverage map, I think that it makes it a, a little bit more of a diff different situation because septic that has to go through the county process is very lengthy, uh, and a lot of times they are hesitant to approve something for commercial use if the existing zoning doesn't allow for that. So it kind of puts, it's put that, I mean, Huntley can speak um, to the difficulty that they've had to getting even any kind of reviews done um, through the septic system because it, for commercial use, even though it meets the town's policies and we really recommend approval, you know, from the staff standpoint, we'd recommend approval for it um, because it's on a state highway, it's adjacent to uh, addition, existing commercial uses, um, but it's kind of a procedural chicken and egg, just as you said, kind of situation. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Huntley Gordon. I'm Mr. Reschneider. It's not available to see me he's ill, but um, we have gone through in the last year and a half extensive uh, soil analysis for the property. We've also taken the three parcels and combined them into one to avoid. Uh, the setback requirements for the different three park organizations that's why it's now a 6.14 acre uh, parcel. So uh, we are seeking the CC zoning district in order to develop a site plan that will conform with the uh, septic availability on the property and present that for approval of reason. Uh, but without the zoning, we're not able to move forward at this time. Oh. Back to Council or Micah, a question. Is this, if we say zone it and you go through the, the drill here uh, with the septic and it's, this thing bogs down, does our approval of the zone it collapse at some point and revert back? It, it, no. it, it will continue in the CC category for two. It, it, right? will have, it will have this self imposed condition. Uh -huh. So until they provide some kind of either on site system, they find some, they connect to the system at Pleasant Creek, which is immediately adjacent to it, uh, or they get septic approval from the county, they would not be able to progress with any additional development. So that's the one, because they have a self-imposed condition, 
you, you can't provide any condition on rezoning because it'd be contract zoning, but they can impose a condition on themselves as part of the rezoning. And so that's, um, they, they brought that up as they were willing to do that so that they could get it to that next step with, with the county because of the zoning issue being uh, a stumbling block for the sewage disposal department at Williamson County. Good question. Um, I said nothing to the public. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to point out that when this county was in the county, uh, when this property was in the county, it was originally a community crossroad designation, um, annexed into the town, and rezoned as anyone as part of the original Pleasant Creek development. Now this parcel is not part of the Pleasant Creek development and the county has since adopted the community crossroads into the hamlet designation which is the properties on either side of the road to the east of this property. However, the properties within compensation are community uh, commercial. We see the community commercial designation which would be consistent with the county crossroads in the hamlet designation for the county. Mm -hmm. The self-imposed condition is, I think we said this last time, but it's, that becomes part of the entitlement, right? Like it, it's, it's binding upon sale. It, it runs sold. with the land. Right. Just like the CC zoning would, the self-imposed condition does. So if it's sold the next day, it's the same thing. It doesn't change. If it never gets sewer, it never gets a permit. Isn't TDEC pretty strict about sewer and floodplains and all that? I mean, it seems like TDEC would be all over that. We've had a sense of high density of soil work done on the property, which is the reason we combine the parcels. And we've had the county and the state out three different occasions to evaluate this floor. So we were seeking the rezoning in order to propose a site plan to get the septic approval for the site plan proposal. I think that we felt last time that this this zoning fit the the, continu the continuation of the commercial zoning along Lewisburg Pike, and I think kind of fits what we see happening on that corner. Make a motion to approve Ordinance 2020-009, Ordinance of the Town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, to amend the town's zoning map by rezoning 6.19 acres of territory located west of Lewisburg Pike near the Harper Paytonsville Road intersection, being part of tax map parcel 144-80.00 from D1 to Community Commercial. All right, so I have a motion. I'll second. Motion on the second. Further discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that, that one passes. It's four, four zero. Uh, we'll move on to uh, item number two under unfinished business public hearing and second reading ordinance 2021 012. An amendment to the land development ordinance to revise Appendix C to clean up and clarify certain plat certificates. Mike? Yes, sir. Oh, well, it's a public hearing. I'm sorry. Well, open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter, please come forward. Being none, we'll close the public hearing. Back to staff. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, these amendments are offered to help clarify language in the required plat certificate blocks. In, in the land development ordinance in order to allow the town's engineering consultants to sign off on the planning commission approved plats. The planning commission provided a favorable recommendation at the August planning commission meeting 
and there have been no changes to the ordinance since first reading. And staff recommends approval of these amendments as presented. Okay, thank you. Court. Mr. Mayor, the last time I noted that, last time I noted this was through a pretty heavy scrutiny of the planning commission is. So we were satisfied with the planning commission. Overly satisfied. Yeah. All right. You're on it. Oh, you want me to make a motion? I see. Uh, I'll make a motion to, hold on, you caught me off guard, to approve the second reading of ordinance. 2021-012, an amendment to the land development ordinance to revise appendix C to clean up and clarify certain plats. All right, I have a motion. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. We tabled or uh, removed number three. Uh, we're on to item number four, approval of reservation wastewater capacity agreement with the town of Thompson Station and Tennessee Valley Homes for the Moon property at 4339 Columbia Pike. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, I'll start off and then uh, let Kirk pick up any, anything at the end. This is a request from Tennessee Valley Homes for waste, future reservation of wastewater capacity uh, for 4339 Columbia Pike, also known as the Moon property. Uh, they're requesting uh, reservation for uh, will be 190 single family units or residential units uh, and the um, the engineering uh, information is included in the uh, reservation agree agreement um, showing that there is sufficient capacity for this request so Kirk I don't know if you have anything else to add Mr. Mayor uh, sorry other than they have submitted the proper application they've gone through the process with uh, getting the engineer letter of findings and it appears that they understand that there will not be any uh, movement uh, forward with it uh, without the MBR system on, online. So uh, both staff and the council have reviewed it and that is a recommendation for approval. Okay. Thank you, staff, council. All right. What was the quantity? 47,500. I apologize. 47,500 capacity is what the elf, the. No, no, I'm sorry, for the request. 180 times. Yeah, how many? 180. It's 180. Should be right. It's 190. 190 is what the, looks like. I apologize. 190 single family houses. It's on, it's in the, the very last page. The oh, there we go. That's what I'm Page 15. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the things that we're wrestling with with wastewater capacity reservation agreements, since it's relatively new, is we go down this path. There's uh, we, we're going ahead and, and gaining some level of certainty as is the developer about future projects timing to be determined. Uh, might be two years. It might be twenty years. Uh, and I sort of think because we just don't know is our past grows of the sewer and so I think it's important for the community to understand that that we're going through a process here and developers also understand that just because we might approve something like this doesn't mean you're entitled to all the other components and bits and pieces to what that subdivision or development might look like and my concern is we're you know we start accelerating things and get adverse consequences right so suddenly planning commission has a rezone request or you know, look at this, look at that, and yet we have no certainty uh, from a funding standpoint when some of this other sewer capacity comes online. And I think we'll talk about that in the next few months again as it relates to moving north of the, the million gallons. So I just offer that up. I think we want to be mindful that reservation capacity is one thing, but getting a, a development fully approved is quite another in a world of uncertainty. On this new reservation process, um, it's zone T2. So the zoning has nothing to do with the request being made? The limitations of zoning? I don't 
don't believe that's how the reservation process was set up. I don't think it had to be zoned specifically for the ultimate request. So it, to get that, they would have to ask for a rezone. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, he's got 63 acres, and we're not asking for 200 homes on 60 acres, which... They would have to what, go back in and ask for a rezone. What zoning is that? Probably Mm -hmm. would, D3 would fit that, even with open space requirements? Okay. Keep in mind, pursuant to the current town policy, the planning commission did not entertain any rezoning without sewer address. So I think through the reservation process, the board approved the name of the municipal code, or uh, you already have septic or five foot, whatever it happens to be, but the planning commission is not taking up any rezoning requests without sewer address first. So, as the mayor alluded to earlier, it is a chicken and egg problem. Mm -hmm. Just got started. First one. But with the reservation right. process, they have a, a set amount of time to be able to meet all of that. If they do not meet the requirements and the obligations, then it goes away. Correct. With those submissions, it's part of the agreement. Yeah. So they only they have a, a window. I understand. Yeah. I feel like this is the first one we've had with rural property asking for 200 taps. Yeah. These other ones have kind of been zoned already for what they're asking for. So. Uh, I would look at the amount of reservation as a maximum. Whatever it happens to be zoned at, you'll be we'll Okay, so the number over. doesn't really matter. It does as a maximum. I think they're only reserving up to that number. Up to that number. Yeah, that's it. That's absolutely right. So keep in mind, the vesting document, as always, is the preliminary plat. I understand. Well, right. We're so we're not even, we don't have a zoning for a preliminary plat, so we can't even. Okay, I got it. It's going Is there a way for us to get a summary next meeting or sometime between then of, of projected capacity and where we're at as far as how many have been approved and in the res in the in the pipeline? We can do that. We'll Absolutely. Have, we'll actually be talking about that I think tomorrow night. The yeah, utility yeah, board. I figured that's a utility board, but and we'll send that out. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I had the same question, so. Make a motion for the approval of reservation of wastewater capacity agreement with the town of Thompson Station and Tennessee Valley Homes for the Moon property at 4339 Columbia Pike. I have a motion. I'll second the motion. Motion second. Further questions, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. It passes four to zero. All right. Uh, let's see. We are at item number five, which is to approve resolution 2021 019. Resolution of the Town of Thompson Station, Tennessee for Amendment 1 to the contract with Kimberly Horn for the design and development of Phase 2 of the Town's Greenway and to authorize the Mayor to sign the contract amendment. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, going to be grant covered. Essentially, it's for additional archaeological work to be done as part of that grant. Michael, would you like to expand a little? Or? Sure. Yes, and this is, um, this is basically a TDOT requirement um, that the for any state funded uh, project, which is, we've taken the grant from PDOT uh, to be able to complete our greenway system for phases two and three. Uh, and as part of that, we have to go through the TDOT local programs process, which requires uh, extensive environmental reviews. We have to go through what's called the NEPA process. Uh, and as part of that, there are archeological and historical uh, experts that look at the project and make determination on uh, if there's going to be any issues to the which we have we 
Green Lake Phase 2 is going through the battlefield without cessation. So we, we knew that there was a chance that there could be some um, archaeological issues going through that. Uh, this is part of the process. It's uh, the NEPA, no one likes the NEPA process. I used to do that in my former career when I worked at Volker. That's one of the reasons I'm not there anymore, uh, is because the NEPA process is uh, so painful to go through. Um, the um, Kimley Horn has actually done an excellent job in shepherding this through the local program process, which every local government will tell you is a drawn out, long process, but we're taking their money, so we have to go through their process. Uh, so part of this is making sure that we're good stewards of the battlefield Thompson Station and that the construction of the final location of remote phase two is not going to be in a location that's going to uh, impair or harm any archaeology that they have to define as part of their process. So what this, and, and TDOT is going, to, is going to require this. Uh, so to, to get through the NEPA process, we're going to have to do this additional work. Um, I, I know Larry uh, had some concerns and, and recommended it be deferred. That's going to push the timelines out even further. Uh, NEPA is a very long process. The further we push it out and we don't provide the information that TDOT's going to have, the longer it's going to take us to get through that process. So uh, I, I would strongly urge you to uh, approve this. As Ken said, this will be part of the grant covered um, part of the overall project. Um, and it, it's it's one of those things that we have to do as part of TDOT's environment. Thank you. We've been working on this project for a while, haven't we? The grant and everything else. Yes. I mean, it, it's, it's been... Since 18? I, I think so. Um, I think the grants were awarded uh, maybe at the end of 19. And then I mean, we've been going through the new process for, for both projects. It just, it's a long, painful process. Everybody, everybody that's gone through it in the state wishes that he would fix that process. This is the same process Spring Hill had to go through before, like they could do the Buckner yes. the process. I wrote the NEPA document for the Buckner. Congratulations. <laughs> so it's, believe me, it's not a fun process for anybody. But Kimberly Warren is one of, the, one of the best firms. It's one of the reasons that the Partners Board recommended them uh, for this. They're one of the best firms at guiding local communities through the NEPA process. They've really done an excellent job for us, including getting concessions that I have not seen other firms, including firms that I work for, be able to get for making sure our project stays on, on, task, because, on task because there is a, a deadline associated with um, one of our grants, and they have really work through local programs to make sure that we're going to not be out of step with that deadline. All right, thank you. All right, what I think I heard you say <laughs> is that uh, I, I kind of share uh, Mr. Simmons' concerns. It seems like it's taken a long time. I think everybody feels that way. Um, but your opinion is that we're on track. Nobody's at risk of losing anything based on these timelines. That's what I. That's what I heard. Well, on track. So we're at local programs mercy. They're the ones that do the NEPA reviews. Okay. So we have to wait until they come and back and which is what they did with this, they come back and tell us either we're good or no, you're going to have to do additional studies. So we're at the point where we've gotten to, they've come back to us and say, you need this, this is a historic site. Um, we actually did a walkthrough uh, almost this time last year uh, and we had a number of people from the State Historical Commission come out because which is very unusual, but they did that because it's a battle site. It's very sensitive. They wanted to make sure that uh, they're supportive of the project, but they just want to make sure that there's, you know, that again, we're good stewards of the battlefield site and aren't harming it for uh, any, any future archaeology that needs to be done or anything that needs to be done. So this is 
part of that stewardship process to make sure uh, we're preparing for it as we should. Uh, but in terms of what we have done as a community to date, we have provided them everything. And so this is the next thing that will keep us moving through the process um, if, if we're able to uh, get this amendment so that the uh, New South team, which is a sub-consultant to Kimball Moore, can come out and do their test science. Okay. And, and we don't have any control over the deadline. We're we're on their timetable and their unfortunately hoops to jump through. Yeah, of course. I wish we did have. If they would commit to a timeline to us, if local programs would, that would solve a lot of problems. But that's at, at this juncture, what's the timeline looking like as far as I, we've got an updated milestone schedule. I can email that out. I think they might be like everyone else, staffing issues, trying to get that situated and trying to, that kind of delays everything of what's going on. As we talk about with the state revolving fund, as I've talked about, for short staff to be able to review and look at different things. So, yeah, I think it's, we're at the mercy of what. Yeah, and, and I, would, I mean, if we delay it, we're just delaying our other project because he has told us we're going to have to do this. So, whether we do it this month or next month, it's still going to be something that they're going to require us to do. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution, uh, resolution 2021 019, a resolution of the town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, for Amendment 1 to the contract with Kimberly Horn for the design development of phase 2 of the town's greenway and to authorize the mayor to sign the contract amendment. Motion. Second. Motion, sir. It, did uh, did Alderman Bell look at this? Did he have any comments? I wish he was here. We talked about it a little bit at Parks Board, um, but I, and I didn't. I mean, he sent the agenda out, but I didn't, I didn't hear any comments. From okay. Him. Other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. So we. What was next? Re redistricting? Uh, redistricting number six. Mr. Mayor, actually, number five became BOMA evaluation process. That oh, was, I thought it, that was, it was before. Last. No, but it was we before. Can take that now if you wish. Mr. Mayor, um, I'd like to have an opportunity to discuss this with you. I see this as a midpoint unilateral contract proposal. We did not, at the beginning, talk about tools or process or format, method, and at the midpoint, um, I have a concern about unilaterally adding, but I'd be glad to discuss that with you. All right. Well, we've got it. We heard the town administrator board. Uh, I think the great why can do a five year contract. Right. I did. Right. We're midway You're, through. We're midway through that, right? Yeah. I believe there's not a formal. No. We didn't. Evaluation. No, sir. When we signed it, there was no tool, there was no mechanism, there was no process. There was either uh, a buy in or buy out. This is more of a, a service provided by MTAS from what we had the discussion of. There's no cost involved to the town, nothing. The town of Millersville is going through the same process right now. And what it is, it allows us to be a better board so you understand what we're looking for. We're kind of restricted in how we meet and discuss things as a group. This gives us the ability to put everything on paper, good, bad, or indifferent, and we discuss it. And we all come to a consensus of how we can be, we can communicate better with you, how you can communicate better with us, and we move forward. As you said, you're halfway through the contract. We probably should have done this earlier on, but we did, and I didn't know about it. But I think this is a better tool for us to be able to help you do your job. And I don't see any harm in doing it because that way what we're doing is we're having an open line of dialogue, an open line of discussion, and we just kind of work everything through. Without a tool or a mechanism like this, I just feel that we're not getting everything accomplished that we need to. And I think this is the approach that a third party comes in and does, just they, they handle everything. 
No one's involved. And we just get it out in the open. And we talk about it. It could be all good. I mean, there could be a couple things we have to work on. I go through this process every year. I have to. And there were several things on my evaluation of, at my job that my boss said, you have to work on these. You have to do them. And I've worked on them. There might be a few things we want you to work on, but there could be other things that we think you're great at. I think we just need to go through the process. That's, I, that's it. I understand your perspective, Mr. Mayor. My uh, opinion remains the same, especially relating to a third party. Um, so as I indicated, I'd be glad to speak with you about that. And I've indicated to council, yeah, I, I'd rather keep that informal if I can at this juncture. But I think that would be best as the next step for you and I to talk further. And as I've told Alderman um, Stover in the past, I said, if he has anything constructive and or otherwise, please pass it through you. So I was rather surprised coming back from a funeral in Virginia this weekend with the agenda going out to hear that tonight. Uh, but anyway, I don't don't intend to elaborate any further this evening. I think that's probably the most constructive way to proceed. All right. Is there action? Is there action? Take an action. It's up to the board to take an action or take no action or make a suggestion or recommendation. And you and I talk all the time. Oh, absolutely, Mayor. We can talk about anything, anytime, anywhere, any place. Well, I think that becomes a little bit of the ingrained process. You two talk. But the rest of us kind of, it's like we're going around in a revolving circle. And that way, again, this is no indictment on anybody. This is to make us a better board. That's it. That's all I want is us to be a better board. The past few meetings that we've had up here, have been some of the best meetings we've had since I've been on the board. Engaging, understanding the information, talking, open dialogue. I think they've been great. I think this helps us in, in, in no uncertain circumstances. And I apologize about the timing. I mean, it's just, I just came back from this meeting. You were I think, there as well. I think it's just, it's an open discussion of what we're going to be doing. It's no, it, it's nothing against anyone. I think it's just, we all need to kind of put the cards on the table, find out what we need to do, because everything we all do, us as a board, staff, attorneys, are for the residents of Thompson Station. That's all I'm trying to do, is improve that communication level. That's it. Mr. Mayor, I, 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 other than just to say, I think we have, I look back at the last two and a half years, and we have brought forward decades of languishing projects and progress, and I feel confident of the amount of headway that's been made. And I agree with one point that it was made. I think the board and staff, everything has been constructive and moving in the right direction. I just object to a unilateral proposal at the midpoint. Uh, this could have been done at the on, not only on the onset, Alderman Stover worked with my predecessor particularly closely. Uh, he knows about that happening after the fact. Those are never good processes. You do that at the beginning of an agreement, not midway through. Uh, I personally would like. I, I personally would like uh, to table this, and hopefully we can discuss it uh, to get a little bit more of the information. Um, would also be able to let Alderman Bell have an opportunity to uh, weigh in as well. If we want to, I think maybe scheduling Chuck to come in at a workshop and have him. I have the discussion definitely object week. to Chuck being involved. I've worked with Chuck in other places, and I, do, I strongly and strenuously object to that. Yeah, I. Well, I, my action would be to delay this until next month and give a better opportunity to understand anything before voting on anything in particular. Again, he is in here for five years, so I don't think that uh, doing due diligence over the last 30 days is going to delay anything or create any negative or positive one way or another for the town. Do you have a, a proposal or something you want to put forward in the next time frame of what it's you're, I mean, I heard you talking about what you wanted to do, maybe something 
Yeah, there's a form that has been put together of kind of what they're using right now. It's a guideline and a guidance of, of how this process is done where the entire board has sent this and it's just a survey. And it's basically, you, you fill it out, it's compiled by MTAS, put together, and the results are then shared with town administrator and the board. And basically a worksheet, or a table of action steps are put together of how we can work together, what we can do. And that's a process done by MTAS. I would support taking it off and getting some of that and we can put it forward. Mr. Mayor, Autumn's in as a recommendation to defer it rather than to table it. Correct. Defer it. Yes. Your motion would be to defer. Discussion until the November meeting. Correct. I'll second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we'll talk about that next month. And Ken, I'll get with you in the meantime. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see. But we're back to our work session topic, right? We, yes, sir, we are. Yes, sir. All right, Number six. And I was hearing at that time that we were going to push it to a more formalized public input back to the session is what we were passing around that idea. But I'll let somebody guess. Can I start? Go ahead. All right, so uh, I had asked for a more comprehensive proposal of similar towns, of similar population, who has gone to ward or district systems, who has rejected it, uh, any kind of more comprehensive information that what does Tennessee state law allow for us to do in terms of how many, how many, um, I've got some other documentation that I'll send over of things that I saw that I'd like to know and have put into a, a memo or a, a study, if you will. Yeah, we'll put a report together. Uh, I know Dr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hill, uh, he's going to look at some similar towns. Uh, I know you mentioned during the break, White House 12,000, that was yeah. one. We'll, we'll definitely outline the limitations uh, involved, maximum, minimum number sort of thing. Uh, we can certainly get a report together. Great. Do, do we also want to include in that two or three options for each different number of potential aldermen? So with, I mean, right now we have four, so we've seen this, but are there, is there another way to do it? You know, that would be different. There's but two levers. There's number of wards and number of aldermen per, per ward. ward. So that, that, that can start out a lot of permutations. So uh, you want to make I, I think we'd want to see at least uh, a two ward option, or, or at least two or three two ward options. Two, four, six. And, and that same thing at four, two or three options yeah. there, and two or three for six. Obviously, five's in between, so if we had to. Yeah, what, are we, what are we allowed to do? Boards, boards, you would have an even board. That's yeah. not oh, for good point. The mayor again. The mayor would be, the tie be at large. If you did wards, each ward would have one or two aldermen. So, fair enough. Two, four, six. Mr. Mayor, if I may, also, if you all recall, there is a 2021 um, set of guidelines for redistricting. I'll try to. Re-email that to you and kind of break it down into a synopsis of just the high points of, of requirements. I think that would help provide some parameters. Yeah, then second to that is can we schedule a, a public work session where that's the only agenda item for public feedback? I think that was, we need, probably need to do that before the next BOMA meeting. Sure. Absolutely. I think maybe in two weeks. The next BOMA meeting is November 9th. <laughs> That's right. Okay, maybe, not, you know, maybe we do it before. We have a meeting in December? No. Unless no. we call it. Something we should talk about. Yeah, I think it's it's a worthwhile discussion if we just have the work session. And, this, and you want it to be a, a standalone, nothing else on. I think it's, wor it's worth our time to do that. I mean, it's... If we have it in December, nothing would come up for a, no, voting just, or anything else until January. Just a, 
but January is when we have to make a decision. You don't, we don't have to, but there's the voter registration cards go out in February. I think the latest to put this in in this election cycle would be it was May. May. So that's your stop that they the be two voter registration separate cards would go out yeah. and count and paste. And There's a yeah. Them. What's the cost of that? That much. I think it's like eight thousand. Yeah. Nine, yeah. Eight thousand. So then the. Anyway, May would be your final Last vote. Your second vote. Yeah. There's a, a minor cost to that, but overall, yeah, you you need to make a decision in the spring or since so doing something in December is not allowed to keep that. Okay. That's the rule of this committee. Yeah. Is any other action need to happen? Meeting date. Uh, meeting date. Tell us when you want that. Mm -hmm. What is the second I, Tuesday of December? Take it, well, I would say let's, earlier. after this meeting, throw out some dates in December that we all can be here. It'd be helpful if we were all here. Okay. Yeah. And particularly with um, Alderman Bell being absent, I think that's very important. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Are we clear? Mm hmm Yes, sir. I have one one real quick thing, if we could, for the January meeting, can we reconvene the beer board? And the top, the purpose of reconvening that is to bring the folks in from Greystone Quarry, have an evaluation with them. Let's have a conversation and talk about how it went, what we saw, what was wrong, and what are they working to do better. And I think. There's part of their traffic study that has to be reevaluated, correct? In May. In May. Well, we so have, we have to do a traffic study and engineering report. Yeah. It's a pretty robust document. So I'd like to kind of do that so we can bring them in, give them a little time to have a conversation. I think they would agree with everyone. They, it wasn't the greatest of starts, but I think they've worked diligently and hard to get some things corrected. And I'd just like to hear their plans of what they're doing. So if we can just do that, I think that would be the best way of having a conversation. January would be the best time to do it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I was, was going to mention this on agenda item three, and it was just taken off. Uh, I want to follow up on the traffic study in Pikes Lane. Just a quick update, because we may not see you all again for a month. Um, Talk to Brandon Baxter today on where we are. That traffic <laughs> in the Rogers has it and we'll be implementing it. Keep in mind the detour through Canterbury is outside of that. It would be at the will of Oklahoma on parking, speed tables, pillows, whatever, what have you. So the next, all these fluid body can make decisions as the time goes on if things are happening in the act. Um, Brandon Baxter anticipates the latest. The electronic signs will go out will be the end of next week, telling people that Clyde's Lane is about to be closed. That is in anticipation of the final piece they're waiting on is the final go ahead from Kudak. I mean, a lot of soil move. They have everything they need. They expect the thumbs up, so to speak, in two to three weeks. That's why at the end of next week, they're going to put up the electronic sign saying, hey, Clyde's Lane is about to be closed. And he expects actual work to begin in three weeks. So I wanted y'all to be aware of that because that starts a 60 day window before the detour occurs. So sure. for your timing, I wanted you to be aware. Of that. We had asked Mr. Baxter for a milestone schedule. I will um, ask him just for that. High level of basically what, sort of what you just outlined, and then what's the projection based on those dates would be very helpful. You know, what's the next closure? What, you know. And have they communicated with Spring Hill or? You all communicated with Spring Hill on in the anticipation, what? but not hard dates yet. I mean, the, the information I just gave you came in today. Right. So, mm -hmm. but when is our schedule? What are we looking at talking with them? Like your counterpart over there? I talk with her when she's back in the area pretty much every two or three weeks. She's been in ICM in ICMA in Portland and uh, is just now getting back. But we have another traffic study with Port Royal Road that we've already been communicating with them about that needs to be done. Be, not only begun, but just like we also had done with Greystone. 
we've already pulled the triggers on two studies. And uh, so we'll have an opportunity to talk more together about both, I hope. We just want to make sure we're, we're getting the information out that it's coming. We know right. what's happening. And that. Mr. Mayor, on communication regarding Kreitz and the detour, we did communicate. I think that communication was, communication was sent out to you all with Williamson County Schools, let them know the time period when everything was going to be going on, asking for feedback. Uh, certainly the town is, is open and willing to discuss what that's going to look like and how we can accommodate their needs. I just want to remind everybody of that. Are we, is Avenue Downs ready to go? Are they cleared to travel through? And it's, it's ready. Yes. I haven't gone through there. They put, how much paving they put down? They do final coat and then they're going to redo it? No, they, so no, they, they won't coat. do final okay. coat just like with any subdivision yep. until the homes are substantially built because the truck track, any of that would just ruin it. Yeah, I didn't know if they were doing that because it would be too right. The one thing we might want to look at too is the canopy going along. Clayton R, I got a call today that tree limbs were falling on people's cars. So we might just kind of want to look at that and have Brian go out, take a quick look at that. So in preparation of all this. Motion to adjourn. 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 Motion to adjourn.